Three years have passed since Ultima 4 thought players around the world to embrace truth, love and courage. Three years have passed in which the ideas that the game presented had time to settle in the minds of the players, to become part of their culture, even part of their upbringing. Three years in which the moral lessons of the game could be digested and understood. Because after three years came Ultima 5, Warriors of Destiny. And here's where the Age of Enlightenment became brilliant. Such a name would suggest that this trilogy of games, Ultima 4 to 6, would be about how this world becomes a better place, how this world evolves and... I don't know, transforms into a utopia. After all, that's what you were building towards in Ultima 4. But enlightenment doesn't refer exactly to what the game world experiences. It's not the enlightenment of the world, it's the enlightenment of the mind. Not of those that live in that world, though they do get a few lessons in who not to trust and why, but the enlightenment of the players. Because through this series, through this trilogy, they learn some very interesting concepts. Let's say you've built a system of morals, a code of conduct by which everyone should live. One which can guarantee, in the long term, with hard work, a prosperous and good life for everyone. But a code of conduct that requires a lot of people, if not everyone, to live by it. What happens when you, as the figurehead of this movement, of this concept, concept of this religion leaves. What happens if for years, if for decades, the embodiment, the physical manifestation of all the virtues in the world, of all that is good, the shining example to be followed, just vanishes? Would it be enough that one man, scorned and covered with scars, still strove with his last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable star? Would it be enough to follow just the code of conduct without actually remembering what it was about? The game says no. And the game says no for a very good reason. People don't work like that. People are not really capable of maintaining over the course of long periods of time the exact core of an idea, because that idea will change, it will shift, it will transform, it will become something else with each passing day, with each generation, with each interpretation. We see this in every aspect of our lives. Take for example folk dances. No, not, not the line dances. You know, the, the ones where they wear strange suits and do all sorts of dances that don't seem to make a lot of sense, but they do it on a certain day because it's, it's an old tradition. And you don't know why, but people have always done it, so why why not do it again and again? Or daylight savings. There's no point to it anymore, but we do it because we've always done it and we forgot why. It was because of factory workers and candles. It's not important. Well, it is because it's, it's currently stupid and pointless, but that's the idea. People forget. And when they forget, they fill in the blanks with something else. While in Ultima 5, it wasn't time, it wasn't forgetting that affected people, it was corruption. And not just any kind of corruption, but the most insidious kind of corruption. The one that still makes you believe that you are in the right. The one that still makes you believe that you are the only one that is in the right. A corruption of the soul, of the mind, that buries itself so deep that you don't see reality anymore, you just see your interpretation of it. The kind of corruption that creates self-righteous assholes that believe that it's their way or the guillotine. That anyone not living by their personal code does not deserve to exist in the society. Yeah, I know, we have a lot of those people running around today, blabbing at TVs and on the internet. And Ultima 5 kind of predicted those people. It's, well, it's not hard to predict those people. They've been around since the beginning of time. And they didn't even need the existence of Shadow Lords to corrupt them. They just did it on their own. They did it by, well, 
the way humans do it, by forgetting and then filling in the blanks with something that seemed better to them, better for them. In the world of Ultima, there existed at one time a evil sorcerer, the first one, called Mundane. He was beaten, his skull was then thrown into the abyss, but he did have a gem, one that uh, gave him immortality, which was kind of forgotten, shattered and forgotten, and out of those gems there came three creatures, the Shadow Lords. And when the Lord British was away with his most trusted council of mages and knights screwing up the underworld, those Shadow Lords came back and they began to corrupt the minds of those in power like Lord Blackthorn. They made him believe that it, it wasn't enough for people to be encouraged to follow the code of conduct of the Avatar, to believe in love and truth and courage. It wasn't enough to make people want to aspire to master all the eight virtues, because some people would not want to and those people would always undermine the effort of the group, of everyone that was striving to become better. And let's face it, most of the people will not even manage to master all of them, they will just focus on maybe one They'll they'll give some money to a beggar now and again. For them, that's that's their virtue. That's their attempt to become like the Avatar. That's not enough, is it? No, no, no. We have to force those people. We have to force them for their own good to become better. We have to cram the virtues down their throats, even if they scream, even if they say no, please stop. We have to get them to become better. And if they refuse, they have have no place being here because this society, this world will become better, it will become a perfect utopia and anyone that tries to undermine it will be destroyed. And so the virtues became enforced by punishments. Thou shalt not lie or thou shalt lose thy tongue. Thou shalt help those in need or thou shalt suffer the same need. Thou shalt fight to the death if challenged or thou shalt be banished as a coward. Thou shalt confess of thy crime and suffer its punishment or thou shalt be put to death. Thou shalt donate half of thy income or thou shalt have no income. If thou dost lose thine own valor, then thou shalt take thine own life. Thou shalt enforce the laws of virtue or thou shalt die as a heretic. And thou shalt humble thyself to thy superior or thou shalt suffer their wrath. They still sound like virtues, don't they? They're not the opposite. Humility isn't being replaced by the pride that destroyed Magincia. No, it's still humility. But humility enforced by violence, enforced by an authority, enforced upon you. And therefore they are virtues that cannot function. The whole idea of Ultima 4 was that you could better yourself, that you, true hard work, could better yourself because that is what you strode for, that is what you fought for. Change comes from within. But when that change is forced, when that change is imposed through punishment, it will not work, especially since the virtues as they are now are worded in a way that doesn't sound completely right, like thou shalt confess to thy crime and suffer its judgment or thou shalt be put to death. What if I'm innocent? What if I'm falsely accused? If I say I'm innocent, I'll be killed, won't I? That's the idea that Ultima 5 had. You went from a system of ideals that was not imposed on anyone to one of laws draconically imposed on the people which are based on the shape of those ideals. Because they're not the exact same ideals, they're different, they are corrupted. They are the tools of a self-righteous totalitarian regime. They are fascism and it sprouted so easily in the absence of the people that understood why the virtue should not be imposed by force. It did sound seductive, didn't it? What if you could get everyone in the world to be as good as you are, to follow to the letter all that you would do? And yes, it was the Shadow Lords behind it that corrupted Blackthorn, but still, the people of Britannia, some of them not under the control of the Shadow Lords, began to think the same way. They began to have the same inclinations to see themselves standing up for a just cause. And 
all those who would try to sabotage it, all those who would form a resistance against it, they were criminals. They were outlaws because they would dare jeopardize something so beautiful towards which everyone was working. A utopia where there is no disorder, where there is no deviation from the word of the law. And that law covers every aspect of your life. That law dictates what is in your soul. And exactly what that law is gets dictated by people who would enjoy dictating things. People who believe themselves the betters of everyone else. The self-righteous. Those who cannot fathom the concept that there's any possibility of them being wrong, either factually or morally. And much like Ultima 4, this was done in a video game that could still not actually fit that much text on a screen. It was done through how the world behaved through how some characters acted, through how you as, as the avatar, you as the founding pillar of this religion had to hide at times, had to refrain from unveiling your identity because it's not your teachings they follow, it's the shadow of your teachings. And you being there now, well that poses a problem. Because if you judge these people in power, these people making laws as being in the wrong, well, we can't have that now, can we? There are so many perils that can be drawn from this. Like how the teachings of Jesus descended into, well, basically barbarism. Frankly, that's that's kind of valid for most religions. How the concept of democracy slowly became an oligarchy. And how the simple concept of respecting others became a bludgeoning instrument to strike those who would disagree with you. Or who just don't agree with you to the letter that deviate in some small and insignificant way. Now sure, Ultima 5 didn't put it in so many words, it, it couldn't, you couldn't fit that many words in the game, it was still quite simplistic in that way, you still had to type map, cinnabon, job things in the parser, so it could have very well gone over the head of people that only played it for a couple of hours and didn't have that much context because they didn't play the last one, but people did understand it. People did realize what this game was about. It was about how even the most noble idea could crumble, could be turned into a tool of oppression. Even the most righteous cause can be so easily twisted into something that goes completely against its fundamental basis. It's a lesson that we need to understand because it's something that affects it's been affecting humanity for ages and will continue to do so. And it's something that we can teach people through video games. And we should try and do it as often as possible because Ultima 5 can be at times a bit hard to play. Granted, it's about as easy to play as Ultima 4, with several more added layers of complexity because... Again, something that very much helps at disseminating the message of the game is if that game is good. And this game is among the best ever made. And the reason why it is one of the best, I mean, besides the gameplay, the way the world is made, the story, it's, it's the way the story is presented to you. The way you are part of the story. You're not some lone hero of legend, well, yeah, you kind of, you are the avatar, but you are still you. The same you from Ultima 4. You are the person, the you, standing in front of the screen that walked into this world. And when you go back, you find that your house was ransacked. You were robbed. And the game tells you that reality, ours, you know, it, it, it could need the quest of the Avatar. All those things you achieve in Britannia and Sosaria, you could achieve them here as well. You could improve this world too. So do it. It's that link to reality. It may be as corny as it would sound right now that you're the person that is standing in front of the screen that goes into the game. As corny as that may be, it gives Ultima weight to its message. It gives it a sense of purpose. And we'll continue on this path next week with Ultima 6 The False Prophet. I don't believe it needs saying, but I do encourage you to play Ultima 5. You'll be able to find it on GOG right now in a pack that includes Ultima 5 4 and 6 as well for the price of 5 euros and 40 euro cents. Again, Ultima 4 is free as a separate game, but it's in this pack as well.
Thank you for watching this show. If you enjoyed it, please consider watching some of our other videos and maybe sharing them or giving a thumbs up if you feel like it. And if you really, really liked what you saw, please check out our Patreon page. For just $1 a month, you could help us make much better shows and get some rewards in the process. Or you could consider buying my book called Tale of Doom. Volume 1 is out now and available for just two dollars and as always if you thought it was horrible you know where to find me and complain about it